So for my next project, I'm buying some grapes, but I gotta harvest them myself. We got several rows of petite Syrah behind me and around in front of me. So uh, we're gonna put up several buckets. And we're gonna make some wine. Reasonmachines.com. All right, folks, it's the next day. We're gonna take these grapes here. We're gonna throw them into uh, this vat, which is just a normal container I've cleaned. And without even de-stemming, we're gonna crush them with my feet. Well, without my sandals, at least. So I made sure to clean my feet up before this. This should be a very fun and perhaps even therapeutic winemaking experience. So we'll get started on that pretty shortly. All right, we're going in. My feet are surprisingly not dyed, and Petite Syrah usually is a, one of those grapes. You'll die from your skin pretty good. <laughs> you can see I'm having all the fun in the with all these grapes under me. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. So for those on the stream and those listening on uh, this video later, I decide not to edit out the commentary. These grapes came from uh, a guy pretty local to me. He was like a 15 minute drive in the next town over. His front and backyard were essentially a vineyard. The guy himself, I want to say worked at the homebrew shop because that's where I saw the ad for this. And he bought this house from a guy who just planted like many rows of Petite Syrah, so. And he said this was his first year uh, actually selling grapes to the public, and I was one of the few takers, so I mean, I'm not gonna complain, this is actually pretty awesome. And I'll have wine at the end of the day. Come on, there we go. All right, I think I've done a good number on these. This looks suitable to move. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is about 27 bricks. The guy told me it was like 25. I guess it's a little sweeter. I'm okay with that. That means more alcohol. I mean, that's a specific gravity reading of uh, 1.11. So let it be known on the record. 
A bit unconventional, but we're going to use a Premier Blanc to ferment a red wine. But uh, I read up and this seems actually okay for pretty much any uh, style of wine. Just a very clean fermenting yeast for all styles. So we'll split our, uh, we'll be crushed into two buckets and then we'll split this yeast among two of them. So let's activate it. Might be a little less than what I'm hoping for yeast wise, but given the amount of juice we have, it'll be end up, it'll end up being about four gallons, which this is made to do five gallons of wine anyway. So we'll be okay. Interesting. Can I actually fit that all in one bucket? I kind of don't want to. Keep going. Oh god, that's gonna... <laughs> that's gonna erupt. I already feel that happening. Oh man, that's delicious. <laughs> My hands are sweet. All right, I decided since I need the headspace for when this eventually foams, and it will foam, we're gonna have it in two separate buckets, and then we'll uh, divide the yeast in half, let them go for about a week, and then we can press it, and then it'll all fit in one bucket because it'll be around four gallons or so of that juice at the end of the day. Well, the good news is it'll have a lot of oxygen to work with. And it'll have a lot of headspace to work with, too. We're going to find out what happens. It's part of my winemaking experience. We've got to fill these airlocks up. Put a little vodka in there, and then uh, these will go in my room, and it'll be all good. So I'm going to go move them. Break at the cap. So this was just I gave up. That's pretty good. It's, it's just liquid to solve.
This here is fermented down to a gravity of 1.00, so it's a little above 14% alcohol by volume. But it's got a lot of stuff in it still, but you can see it's already making wine tears. So, yeah, it's very alcoholic. It needs more time, but it's, it's not bad. Like, that was actually a decent sip. Like, it's got a lot of sediment in there. It needs a lot of time to settle. This is how we're going to mimic a bladder press. A bladder press. Okay. Thank you, Scott. That's a lot of juice. See a lot of juice is starting to come out just from that. Or I guess it's wine at this point now. <laughs> I think the Pizzerra is like a lower class of grape. Yeah, it's not one of the, I wouldn't call it premier, but I mean it's pretty popular still, especially in Australia. Alright, I can't get any more out of the pumice, so we put about three gallons of juice, I mean now it's wine. So we have a lot of solids will settle out, so we'll have a, we'll have a good deal of wine to work with in the next coming months. So here's the situation, folks. I noted when I got home that there was a there was a leak into the containment. So I went over, looked at our fermenter here, and uh, well, there was a crack in the bucket. Believe it or not, it's the first time I've had this happen. Thankfully, there wasn't too much wine lost, as you can see. Oh, uh, where's the volume? Yeah, I'm still just a little under three gallons. We got a lot of uh, sediment left behind in this bucket. I want to attribute the leak not being so severe because of how thick the uh, wine mixture is with all the sediment and junk. So yeah, that was kind of an emergency I had to respond to today. Boy, I'm glad it wasn't worse, but uh, that's the first time I've had like a crack in my bucket, like nearly destroy. I want to bet that it probably happened during my pressing with that potato masher and just to put enough stress on it to where, uh, you know. Yeah, you can see right here. That's where the crack was. Yeah, all that sediment was clogging the hole. That's what was slowing it down. Yeah, good times making wine. So, the batch is saved. I'm going to clean out my containment because I don't want all that uh, wine just kind of there in my room. I mean, that's kind of also probably why I smelled wine when I walked in from work this morning or this afternoon. What we have here is the Petite Syrah. We're going to be uh, taste testing because uh, it's ready to go. Hmm. Smells fruity. Uh, got a little wine tears here. You can definitely tell it's got uh, some alcohol in it. Hmm. Yeah, that tastes like how Petite Syrah should taste. Same bad at all. If I had to compare it to. Uh, Another wine, I'd compare it to uh, the Bogle's Petite Syrah from Clarksburg. It's very similar to this one, and that's actually the... Uh, I taste tested some of that prior to uh, making this wine, just to have an idea of like what to expect from Petite Syrah. So if it tastes enough like that, then I think I did a good job. Or maybe I should say the grower did a good job. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> I told you it turned your tongue blue. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what the solution is to uh, remove that from the wine. Mm -hmm.